we're going to take a look at the semester review, the study guide for the final exam for Algebra 1A. Now, the idea is that when you are watching the video, you would be writing down all the steps and the little notes that are going to help you be successful on the exam. And then when you take the exam, I want that review sitting right beside you. And when you look at problem number one on the exam, I want you to look at problem number one on the review and go, okay, that's what we, yep, now I know how to answer that one. So we'll be adding things to our problems just so that we be sure to have all the good stuff, okay? Let's take a look at problem number one. Now, number one asked me to name the property that this statement illustrates. Now, we talked about three properties in our class. We talked about commutative property, which I'm making a few notes over here. Commutative property was about the order changing. We talked about associative property, which was about the, the groups changing. And we talked about distributive property. And in distributed property, the only way I know to tell this one is to just give you a little example so that you have it here, right? Where we did the distributing the two to the X, distributing it to the three. Now, looking at this example, which property does it fall into? Did the order change? If it did, then it's commutative. Did the groups change? I don't really see any groups, by the way. Or did the distributive property happen? And it looks to me like this is commutative. Because notice that the 27 came first on the left and then the pi, but on the right, the pi came first and then the 27. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm super colorful when I do this. So you're going to see me use different colored pens and different highlighters. That's just how I roll when I do things. So, all right, friends. So number two asked me to name the subsets of real numbers to which the number negative seven um, belongs. Okay, so negative seven, because it's negative, I know it's got to be in the integers. So you'll make a note to yourself that integers are positive and negative whole numbers. Now, friends, when I do these, I'm going to give us some examples, okay? Okay, I didn't put all of them, but I gave you a few examples of what integers are. Okay, negative seven is also a rational number. It's a rational number, and these are numbers that can be written as a fraction. Now, you may ask yourself, how is negative seven written as a fraction? I want you to think of negative seven over one. We can write any number as a fraction by putting it over one. And then finally, it is a real number, but we were just asking for the subsets. Now, let me also put a little note of the things. It's not, it is not a natural number. Those are the numbers we teach little kids to, to count with, right? We teach babies one, two, three. Those are our natural numbers, okay? It's not a whole number. A whole number is the one, two, three, and then we throw in zero because we teach them that they have no more candy, right? So those natural number, whole number, the uh, this number is not, okay? So I'm not going to circle it, but I want you to see that it's not falling into those categories. And I want you to have some examples of the ones that it does. The only other one that we're missing are the irrational numbers. And this one's not irrational because these are numbers that can't be written as a fraction. So they're decimals like pi and square root of five and all of that good stuff. All right, keeping going. Number three, want to write an algebraic expression for the word phrase. So I want to take these words and change them into variables and signs like plus and minus and times. Okay, so 15 plus, that's pretty easy to translate, right? The quotient. Quotient is a word that means division. Watch the order, though, because 60 comes first and then W. I've got to divide 60 divided by W. 
Now, you and I both know that final exam is going to be multiple choice. So let's list some other things it could look like. We could write division as 60 divided by W as well. Mm hmm. OK, good. I didn't take a look at the final exam before I came on to do this recording, but I know that we also got to know the word product. And the word product means multiply. So I'm going to put that over here on my notes. Got a little, have a little extra, right? So there's my answer for this one. It's either or, and it just depends on what's given in the answer choices, okay? All right, number four. I got the square root of 9 sixteenths. Now, when you have a square root with a fraction, do you think of writing it as separate square roots in a fraction? Might make it a little easier for you. Because you can type square root of 9 in your calculator and get 3. You can type square root of 16 in your calculator and get 4. And there you go, my dear. That works just, just fine. Um, also, did you notice that I'm giving you the lesson numbers for this so that you'll know where to go in the course? If you want to go back and practice some of those concepts, you definitely can do that. Okay. All right, friends, I went ahead and brought my calculator over for the next few questions because I really want you to use your calculator on this one. If you don't have a graphing calculator like the one I've got over here, that's okay. Feel free to use Desmos for now. Okay, just realize that this one's going to be the one that we have to use for state testing. But I understand you may not have one right now. That's okay. Let's look at number five. I'm going to set it up to get ready to use that calculator for. It told me A over B. Now, friends, I need you to remember that that really means A divided by B. Because we're going to put it in our calculator that way. We're going to do one-fifth divided by 10 elevenths, and that looks a lot like hard work. But here's the deal, friends. If I can tell the calculator what I need, it can do the heavy lifting for me. So here's exactly how I want you to type it in. Now, that division is the button, not what it's going to type. I'll show you what it's going to type here in a minute. It's going to do 1 divided by 5, and then it's going to draw that slash. But to get that slash, you have to press that divide by button. So let me show you what that will look like. If I type it in, I'm going to do parentheses, 1, divide by 5, close parentheses, divide by, then parentheses, 10, divide by 11, close parentheses, and enter. And it gives me a calcul uh, a decimal, okay? Now, chances are the multiple choice is not going to be a decimal. So you need to know how to tell the calculator, hey, give me a fraction instead. And you're going to use these buttons, math, enter, enter. Now, my friends who are using the Desmos calculator, Desmos puts a little fraction button right beside the decimal answer, and you just click it, and Desmos will convert it to a decimal, I'm sorry, a fraction for you. So let's click math, enter, enter, and see how the calculator can give me what I need if I will tell it what I need. So I get 11 fiftieths. And again, friends, I didn't do I didn't do the whole, if you remember back from earlier math classes, I didn't flip the fraction and multiply and all this. Stuff. I could have, but if I know how to use my calculator, I tell it what I need, it will do the heavy lifting for me. Let's look at number six then. Again, I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to type that in just like this, friends. I'm going to tell the calculator. This is what I want you to do. I'm going to do parentheses. Oh, let me clear my screen just for simplicity. Parentheses 2 divided by 3, close parentheses, caret 3, enter. Gave me a decimal, but friends, remember, I'm going to color it in a little different color because it's not an answer, but it's uber important. Right? I'm going to put a little do, 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 do. Don't forget this part, right? And I'm going to do math, enter, enter. 
and the calculator can give me what I need, but I have to tell it what I need. Okay, look at number seven. I'm gonna type this one in my calculator as well. I'm going to type it very carefully because I've got to make sure that I tell the calculator exactly what I need. All right, clearing my screen, let's type this one in. 52 minus eight carat two. Now friends, look where that cursor is. That cursor is still in the exponent. I need you to then press the right arrow before you keep typing. Otherwise, the calculator is not going to know that you're no longer in the exponent. Now, minus 3, parentheses, 4, minus 2, close parentheses, caret 3. And then you can press enter. And my answer I get is negative 36. Now, for our review purposes, remember, I'm going to be looking for work. Your teacher is going to be looking for work. So I want you to write out exactly what we type in that calculator for your work, okay? Because you've got to show that you know what to put in that calculator just for our review purposes, for the uh, credit that you're going to be getting for this review. All right. Let's do a few more in this video, and then I will break and do the other, um, I'll do the, some of the other problems in another video. And of course, I will link the second video down in the comment, in the description here. So number eight says, which is the solution of this equation? So friends, remember that our ordered pairs come in form x, y. So those first coordinates are x's, the second coordinates are y's. So I'm going to be substituting in for a, I'm going to substitute in 3 for y and negative 1 for x. And what I'm trying to decide is, are these two equal? So I've got negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6. 3 does not equal 6, so I know that a is not the correct answer. We have to keep checking the other ones though. I'm gonna put in eight for y, and I'll put in negative two for x. And so that gives me eight. Then I have negative two times negative two, which is four. And that gives me four plus four, which also is eight. And that tells me that is my answer. So really, friends, I'm trying to get to find out which one is equal on both sides. Let me go ahead and remove my calculator out of the way just so we have more space. It's always good to have more space when we're working. There we go. All right, let's look at number nine. Okay, on number nine, we ask ourselves what's happening to the variable. What's happening to n? It's being multiplied by three, it's being subtracted by four. So we're gonna do the opposite of subtracting four. The opposite of subtracting four is to add four to both sides. That gives me three n. Notice that minus four plus four cancels each other out equals 15. And now I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying by 3. The opposite of multiplying by 3 is to divide by 3, and so that n is 5. And that will be my answer. Now don't forget, you can always go back in, plug in 5 for n, and see if you get the same on the other side. That's a one way to check your answer. Let's look at number 10 then. Ask yourself again, what's happening to the variable? X is being divided by seven. So we're gonna do the opposite of dividing by seven, which is to multiply both sides by seven. When I say both sides, I mean both sides of the equation. B 
because we know that seven multiplying by seven and then dividing by seven will cancel. And I get this X by itself, X equals 84. So I only had one thing to do to get the variable by itself in that problem. Let's do a couple more here. Uh, number 11, I'm going to take that negative two that's in front of the parentheses and I'm going to distribute it to the parentheses. So I'm gonna multiply negative two times two T and I'm gonna multiply negative two times negative one. Now, negative two times two T gives me negative four T and negative two times negative one gives me two. Now ask yourself, what's happening to the T? It's being multiplied by negative four. It's being added by two. So let's start by doing the opposite of adding two, which is to subtract two. That gives me 12 equals negative four T. The plus two and minus two cancel each other out. And now we get to do the opposite of multiplying by negative four. The opposite of that would be to divide by negative four. 12 divided by negative four would be negative three equals T because that four, negative four divided by negative four cancel out. So I get that T equals negative three. All right, one more friends for this video, then I'll stop. Link the remaining problems in the description below so that you can access them. Don't forget, you wanna show all your steps on every problem when you submit them for your credit. Now, how your teacher is awarding your credit for these is gonna might change just a little bit. So I'm going to leave that up to you talking to your teacher about what kind of credit you get. But don't forget, you gotta show all your steps no matter what. All right, our last one for this video is gonna be number 12. I've got 5F plus 7 equal, I'm sorry, less than or equal to 22. So remember, when you're dealing with an inequality, you use the exact same steps as when you had an equal sign. So we're still asking ourselves, what's happening to the variable? It's being multiplied by 5. It's being added by 7. So I'm going to do the opposite of adding 7, which is to subtract 7 from both sides. That leaves me with 5F. That plus seven minus seven cancel. And I've got less than or equal to 15. Now I've got to do the opposite of multiplying by five, which is to divide by five. And look at this, my five, multiplying by five, dividing by five cancel, leaving me with F is less than or equal to 15 divided by five, which is three. So friends, I'm so glad we were able to work problems one through 12. Don't forget in the description below, I'll put the links for the remaining problems if you need them. And don't forget, show all your steps so you can get the credit for the review. And then use that review on the test to do your very, very best. Bye for now.